Well, all right, welcome back to As It Should Be. Paul Bertolino here in the world famous As It Should Be studios. All right? Yeah, well, it's Halloween, isn't it? Halloween 2023, and well, what does one do on Halloween? I know what, if it's me, you guys address as Kiss or you dress as Alice Cooper. Seems like those are the only two options anymore. Because uh, I don't care about the misfits and I don't care, you know, whatever. Kiss and Alice Cooper, <laughs> those, are your, those are your Halloween options. Uh, you know, maybe Bowie, I guess, if you want to, you know, you know, step out on the edge a little bit more there. But yeah, you know what? I'm doing Alice Cooper. Because, you know, this, this, this last Thursday, we just did a big Alice Cooper show where, I, we, you know, me and, and, and a band of friends, we, we did uh, a live show here in, in New York at a place called uh, Arlene's Grocery where we played the entire Killer album live. And, you know, so I'm in Alice Cooper mode. And uh, so I decided for this Monday's video, I would do an album ranking, Alice Cooper. But just the Alice Cooper group albums, okay? The seven Alice Cooper group albums. Now, I know some of you fans out there, you're gonna come in there and go, how could you leave out this album? Why, why are you only doing that era? What about the, the great 90s record? What? Don't worry. Keep your pants on there. At some point, I will be doing the entire catalog. For now, I'm just doing the Alice Cooper group albums. Calm down, it's okay. Eventually, I'll do them all. Sorry, people. People get all, you know, they get they, they come unglued in the fucking comment sections about this stuff. So even though I'm I'm discussing it here, they probably still are gonna leave bitchy comments. You people, I cannot help. So, all right, perhaps we should get started now. I you know I'm an Alice Cooper fan from way back. I mean, I, you know, I don't go all the way back, all the way back, obviously. Uh, I got into Alice Cooper when I was 10, in 1980, when Flush the Fashion came out. So Flush the Fashion is actually my first Alice Cooper album. That was where I first really got into him. I had some older friends, Saul and Caesar. Uh, you know, for, for those of you, you know, a lot of people who are going to be watching this video are going to be Alice Cooper fans who haven't necessarily watched my, my channel before. So for those of you who watch the channel, there's going to be some repeat. But for those of you, the uninitiated, yeah, Saul and Caesar, some older friends of mine who were big music fans and, and turned me on to a lot of stuff, turned me on to Alice Cooper when I was 10, when Flush the Fashion came out. Got really heavily into that, you know, started digging through all their other Alice Cooper albums, and you know, I immediately became a fan. Uh, so that would be 80, 81, when I was 10, 11, because that's the period when I just really just dug into the albums and got more and more familiar and just, be just became a complete lifelong fan. So that's what I'm working with, uh, but you know, I'm I, 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 it's typical of me though. I like I'm an old school type of guy. It's all about the group for me. It's all about the band. Now there are a lot of Alice Cooper solo albums that I really love. There there are some even like way later ones that I really love, but when it comes right down to it, it's all about the band for me. And uh, yeah, so. Anyway, I should probably get started. I'm going to rank the seven Alice Cooper group albums. Here we go. All right, it's so coming in at number seven, Muscle of Love. Yeah, now, I want to tell you right now, I love Muscle of Love. I love every one of these albums. Absolutely love every one of them. So even the album at the bottom, I love. You know, I just love some albums more than other albums, but Muscle of Love, I'm not... A lot of people kind of don't rate Muscle of Love that highly. I'm not one of those people. I love that album. But if I'm going to be real, it is my least favorite of the seven, okay? Um, but that's not saying too much. That's still that's still a lot of, that, that's still a whole muscle of love I have for that. Um, now, I don't have a copy of it here. I do have the album. Trust me, I've had that record since I was a wee lad. I just don't have my copy here. Not all of my records are here in my, in my apartment. Uh, so that's the one. I have every other album here to show you as we go along. That particular one I don't have a physical copy of, so that's why you saw a pop-up. But yeah, Muscle of Love, I, I remember as a kid that also being one that... I think at first I, I had a little trouble with it. There were, I had my favorite songs on it, but overall there were songs that I didn't... I just didn't get. Like I didn't, I didn't like Crazy Little Child. I didn't even like Working Up a Sweat. Uh, but I always loved uh, Big Apple Dreaming, and I always loved uh, Never Been Sold Before. But over time, I, I kind of grew to uh, appreciate that album more and more. Um, yeah, I mean, Hard Hearted Alice, one of my favorite Alice songs, one of my very favorites. However, it is a little bit of 
uh, of a frustrating track for me because, you know, you have the the slow kind of dreamy ethereal first section of the song, and then it goes into the more upbeat song when the band kicks in. I don't like the latter half. I want the entire song to be like the first half of the song. I don't ever want it to kick in. I want it to always just remain dreamy throughout. So, yeah, so I kind of have a low, uh, frustrated sort of uh, love for that song because it's not perfect, but uh, I do love it. Yeah, Never Been Sold Before, Big Apple Dreamin'. I always really liked Teenage Lament. Well, I liked it probably more when I was a kid, but I really, yeah, and the title track, Muscle of Love, oh, man. That, that is probably one of the most kick-ass songs in the entire catalog. The entire Alice catalog, let alone the group catalog. Um, now, the packaging for that, you know, with the box, and you have the inner sleeve with the photos of them at the mud wrestling place, and then you have the book cover. Now, you know, I had... The, the copy that I had since I was a kid had all those pieces, and so I used to just stare at all, stare at every little detail because there were so many details in there to stare at. Um, but so much of it went over my head because you know I was a kid. You know, even a lot of the the uh, uh, innuendos about the songs, like "Muscle of Love," I didn't even know that that meant you know your dick. I did. I didn't know that, and I it got completely past me that the cover that it's supposed to say that it contains Alice Cooper's penis with a little stain at the bottom, meaning, like, that's, you know, dried up cum stains or whatever. I... Right past me. I, I was I was probably into my 20s before I went, oh, 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 okay. You know, what are you going to do? But, yeah, Muscle of Love, great, great album. Obviously not as good as the other ones. I You know, I consider Muscle of Love to be the rock and roll over to Billion Dollar Babies' Destroyer. You know what I mean? Destroyer is like the, the, the epitome of production for Kiss. Billion Dollar Babies is the epitome of production for Alice Cooper. And then right after that, they both go to like a more basic kind of, you know, dry, you know, just basic rock album. So, yeah, that's kind of where I put it. Um, yeah, so there you go. Muscle of Love. Okay, so coming in at number six. Oh, this is going to piss some people off. <laughs> Billion Dollar Babies. <laughs> yes. Yes, I have Billion Dollar Babies merely at number six. Amazing album. I fucking love this album. Absolutely love this album. I only have it at number six. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. This is like the Sgt. Pepper of Alice Cooper. In terms... For me, uh, in, in more ways than one. I mean, this is the epitome, like I said, of their production. But it's also... I also say so because... The, the greatness of this album lies more in the production and the arrangements, I think, than the songs. There, some of my very favorite Alice Cooper songs are on this record. Hello, Hooray, uh, uh, the title track, Generation Landslide, some incredible songs on here. But for me, this album's a little spotty. Uh, it's, it's, it's not as consistent as most of their other albums. I, Rape to Friesen is good, but I just, it's not... I just don't. It just it doesn't hit me where I live like like so many other Alice Cooper songs do. It's it's perfectly good. I like it, but just it, it just lacks that extra for me for some reason. Elected, I always really love. That's a highlight. I've gotten a little tired of it. I've never liked Unfinished Sweet. Now I I don't dislike it. it. Isn't like oh I hate that song. Just skip it. It's just sort of like oh yeah okay that one. I just Unfinished Sweet. There's something about that one that just doesn't grab me that much and never has. Like I it was a skipper when I was a kid. Now I'll I'll listen to it, but I still don't have anything going on here with that with that track. Um, no more Mr. Nice Guy. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Great 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 single. Great pop single. And uh, Generation Landslide. One of Alice's best lyrics. One of Alice's best songs. And I have a hair in my mouth. And I'm probably smearing my makeup. All right. Okay. Now, but see, also, I, I just think Sick Things is just okay. Sick Things is just... Eh, I, I don't dislike it. I don't like it much. It's just kind of there. Marianne is a throwaway. I Love the Dead is a great track and, and a great closer. But yeah, it's just... Uh, song for song, I don't think it really stands up to a lot of the other albums, even though... This album has much higher highs than some of the albums that I have above it. Much higher highs than some of the albums I have above it. It just also has much lower lows for me, and it's just not as consistent. So, eh. but I love the album. Really love this album, okay? Billion Dollar Babies. All right, it's coming in at number five. Uh, 
Yes, I have pretties for you above billion dollar babies. Oh, you are losing your mind right now. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you, I, I would not always have put this album above billion dollar babies, especially when I was a kid. When I was a kid, this record did not compute. I, I kept going back to it and I had my certain favorites, but it took years and years and years of repeat listenings for it to finally sink in and for me to finally like find my way with this record. Yeah, I wouldn't, this would have by far been at the bottom, I think, for me, you know, decades ago. But I, you know, as I've gotten older, I've just grown to appreciate this album so much more. And I spoke at the beginning of the video about how a group of friends and I had just done uh, Killer, the album Killer, live in its entirety. Well, we also have done Pretties For You live in its entirety, and that's kind of how it all started. Uh, it's we, It was a group called Pretties For You in New York City. You can look it up. There's some YouTube stuff, I think, that you can look up, where we... And we played, we live, you know, we're here in New York, and we played the, the album in its entirety here in New York. And, you know, Dennis Dunaway and Neil Smith came out to see it. You know, Dennis sat in with us for, for the encore. You know, people packed the place. It was crazy. Like, some a, a guy flew in from Sweden, flew in that day, saw the show, flew home the next day. I mean, peep, th this album has rabid fans. And, uh, I mean... Like I said, I didn't like it much as a kid because I didn't get it. But over the years, I grew to love it more and more. But learning it uh, to play live and playing it live and having those experiences really put this over the top. Like, this album is so much deeper in my heart now than it ever would have been years ago. And I just... Yeah, I just I love it so much. Uh, no, I'm not gonna make the really stupid reference. I love it so much. <laughs> but yeah, I mean this this album. I mean you know it has that kind of weird sort of you know they've been hanging out with early Pink Floyd kind of vibe about it, and they haven't really got their their thing together yet. But I just think that this this record is it just stands on its own as in, on a little island all by itself, and and it's kind of perfection in a way. I don't think they could have. I, they, they couldn't have and shouldn't have made another record like this again and not be, you know people are going yeah they shouldn't have no I'm saying like this this album really kind of needs to it's special it needs to kind of be its own little island and uh, I'm glad it is and uh, yeah pretty for you all right it's so coming to number four easy action easy action yeah easy action now this, uh, that, that pretties for you and this easy action are the actual copies that I, that I had from when I was a kid. Like I've, I've had these very copies since I was 11. So that's why it's a little, a little rough. There's a little bit of ring wear there and stuff, but I got Dennis Dunaway to sign it. The whole band to sign that one. I have better copies of these albums, but these are like the copies that I, that I came to know and love these albums with. These are the ones that I would hold and stare at, you know, when I was a kid. So, you know, I'll always have these, and yeah, these are the ones I chose to get signed when, when I had opportunities. But, easy action. Now, I talked about just now about Pretties For You kind of being an island, and that there's no other album like it, and there shouldn't have been. Now, this one's not too far off. It's it's really kind of, it's, it's absolutely the link between the, the kind of uh, the mainstream Alice Cooper, the love it to death and later Alice Cooper. And, you know, a link between that and Pretty's Few. It, it has a lot of the weirdness and the quirkiness that Pretty's Few has, but it still has a different sound. It's still different. Like, they've definitely moved forward big time on this album. And it has, I, you know, yeah, I really, I, this has always been one of my favorites. I mean, Mr. and Mr. Meaner, Shoe Salesman, oh man. Shoe Salesman. I mean, I, one of these days I'll do a favorite Alice Cooper songs video. Look for Shoe Salesman to be on that fucking list, man. Yeah, Still No Air, Below Your Means. I mean, you have Michael Bruce lead vocals on this. Great stuff, great stuff. Return of the Spiders. Oh, man, Laughing at Me and Refrigerator Heaven. I mean, uh, Lay Down and Die Goodbye. Beautiful Flyaway. Oh, Oh, I'm just realizing the album, the, the tracks are out of order on the back. Beautiful, beautiful flyaways before lay down and die goodbye. But yeah, this it, it's kind of, it's almost kind of a, kind of a little maybe a little hipster to kind of rate this album so high and to rate it above stuff like Billion Dollar Babies. But I'm telling you, man, this goes back to when I was an 11 year old kid. This 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 album runs deep for me, and I've always really loved it. Uh, before I even knew anything about you know trying to rate 
uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a more obscure album over a more popular one. I just really, uh, and I, I really love this font. I love the font. Uh, look for on the on the thumbnail. I may use this for the thumbnail. I'm not sure, but I'll tell you something about the cover. When I was a kid, <laughs> I thought this was a group of women. I didn't know it was the band. Well, you know, easy action, a bunch of shirtless women. You know, you know. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, easy action. Absolutely love it. Okay, it's so coming in at number three. School's out. Yeah, school's out. This album, man, we're, these, these top these top three, I mean all of these albums, but really, these top three are the absolute, like, tip-top amount of Mount Olympus. Whatever. Um, but this album is almost perfect. Almost perfect. I've never really cared about Grand Finale. I've probably only listened to it all the way through a couple of times. I don't know. I mean, you know, you're like, what? What kind of Alice Cooper fan are you? Yeah, I've had this album literally since I was a kid, since I was a 10, 11 year old kid, and I've probably played Grand Finale like a couple of times. I don't know. For me, that album ends with Alma Mater. But from School's Out, the first track, all the way up to Alma Mater, it's absolutely perfect. Now, I don't. I guess I don't really wish for the album to end with Alma Mater. I just wish there was a stronger closer. Alice Cooper albums generally have really strong closers, and this one has a really just weak, kind of forgettable closer as far as I'm concerned. But everything else, I mean, obviously School's Out, the track, you know, the single, the, the, the title track, is, is a classic beyond words. Looney Tune is probably one of my very favorite second tracks. You know, like, you know, as far as the second track on each album goes, that's probably one of my very favorite uh number two track possibly my very favorite no 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 i think shoe salesman might be but uh, anyway blue turk Ooh, yeah this really has some of the really the stuff that just really 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 kills me is on this album uh blue turk my stars oh man blue turk and my stars are probably my very my two very favorite songs but then public animal number nine is great alma mater yeah this this album is absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning, and uh, comes in at my number three. All right, it's so coming in at number two. Love it to death, love it to death. Yeah, man, Ugh, I it, it's really tough not to make this number one, but you know my number one is better. It really, uh, objectively, and just in, in every way, in every respect. But man, this one, this one, I actually kind of runs deeper in my heart than my number one. Um, even though I still think my number one is a better album. But this, oh man, this album. I remember I told you about my friends, my older friends who had, who bought Flush the Fashion. And they had pretty much the entire catalog up to that point that I you know, that I went through in order to kind of become a fan and get familiar with this material. The first two albums, Pretty Few and Easy Action, and this one, they didn't have. So they basically they had everything from Killer to Flush the Fashion. And that's what I had to work with. They, it took a little while, you know, it took, you know, months, I guess, a few months to get the first couple albums. But at one point, I actually found this at, not this copy, but I actually found this album at a used record store for three bucks, <laughs> okay? And I was with Caesar. you know, I told you, Saul and Caesar. I was with Caesar, and he's like, hey, there's a love to death here. I don't think he had enough money to buy it himself, so he basically talked me into buying it. Well, that wasn't exactly a hard sell. Obviously, I really wanted to have that album. Well, the record store had two copies of this album. They had your standard mid-70s Warner Brothers copy with the airbrushed cover, and it was the 77 Burbank Warner Brothers label with the trees and stuff. And then the other one they had was more expensive. I don't remember how much it was. Maybe it was $10 or something. We're talking early 80s here. And it was the thumb cover on the pink straight label. And Caesar goes, well, here, let's... He wasn't even paying attention to what was, you know, more rare or, or original. He wasn't paying attention to the label or the thumb cover. He's like, okay... He mixed and matched. He went, okay, what's the better cover? What's the better album? And he looked at it, and the straight label album was in better condition. So he switched them out, and he put that in the 70s airbrushed cover. cover. And I bought that for three bucks. And so that was what I had for years. 
that's that was how I knew that album for years, and that is the the version of that album that I came to know and love every note of that album uh, with you know pink straight label in an airbrush cover. Anyway, and unfortunately, I don't think I actually have that copy anymore. But now I have this copy, which is a, a, a thumb cover copy, and it's a white label promo. So, so this is, you know, this one has a place in my heart too. And and I and I got this one signed too. When I had a chance to get everybody to sign, I got Pretty for You and this one. Um, and anyway, the songs, Caught in a Dream, 18. Obviously, always love that track. I'm a little bored with it now, but I'm not going to say it isn't a great song. I remember as a kid hearing it on here for the first time after knowing it from the Greatest Hits album, and when the harmonica comes in, I was like, what the fuck's going on here? That took a minute to get used to. But uh, yeah, Long Way to Go, uh, Black Juju, Dennis Dunaway's Tour de Force, um, Is It My Body? Now, Side 2. <laughs> side 1's great, but this album is really all about Side 2. Is It My Body? Hallowed Be My Name, Be Thy Name, by Be My Name, Be My Name. Second Coming, Ballad of Dwight Fry, Sun Arise. Second Coming into Ballad of Dwight Fry. Ooh, and you know, and you know what I'm talking about. I'm not, I, you know, we're all Alice fans here. We all absolutely adore Ballad of Dwight Fry. I, anybody, okay, anybody who's an Alice fan, are you an Alice fan and you don't like Ballad of Dwight Fry, or you're like, eh, it's okay, let me know in the comments because I don't know if such people exist. Can you possibly be an Alice Cooper fan and not absolutely just love practically to tears Ballad of Dwight Fry? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that, that album... Like I said, that album runs a lot deeper for me than my number one, but it's just not quite as good of an album. And, I, and when I say that, I'm talking by, you know, by that much. By that much. And, uh, yeah, what an, and, and, to, and to think that in 1971, both of these albums came out. This leads me to my number one. You know what it is, because which one have I not talked about? Killer. Yeah, killer. Yeah, I mean, I song for song, uh, just in, in, in every respect, this is by far the best Alice Cooper album for me. I mean, spoiler alert, when I do the whole entire catalog, solo and band, this is still going to be number one. <laughs> I'm not going to put, I'm, I, I'm not going to put Dada or, you know, fucking Hey Stupid over this. Rest assured. But man, oh my God. At this is the single most, this is actually the only absolutely perfect Alice Cooper album. You know, and doing this album live recently in its entirety is just, 11 year old me was absolutely freaking out, I'll just put it that way. But th now this copy of this album, this is not my copy from when I was growing up, that one is long gone. It, you know, it was, it was well used, you know, ring wear, scratches, and I probably wrote my name on it, it was, it was in terrible condition, but this, I got this at uh, A1 Records here in Manhattan a few years ago, just before uh, vinyl prices started to go absolutely insane. Just, we were just on the verge of that happening, but it hadn't happened yet. And this is an absolutely mint copy, white label copy, an absolutely mint white label copy that I got for 30 bucks, which when I bought it, it seemed like a lot. I was like, oh, damn, 30 bucks. Oh, man. Because, you know, it's like I already have three copies of Killer, all, you know, every one of which I probably paid three bucks for with calendars. 30 bucks. Uh, I hemmed and hawed, and I thought, well, fuck it, I'll buy it. Whew. Boy, am I glad I did. I wouldn't be able to touch this for less than 100 or, you know, it would be three figures now, probably. And uh, because I'm telling the, the the record in here is just sparkling sparkling like this is not I don't play this record this is a fucking museum piece this thing but I okay under my wheels be my lover halo of flies desperado you drive me nervous yeah 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 dead babies and killer yeah that's just just a one huge giant masterstroke I mean yeah I put this way above billion dollar babies and I know a lot of you people do not agree there's a lot of people who put billion dollar babies at number one and I don't fault you but for me it's killer all the way all right so there you go that is my ranking of the seven Alice Cooper group albums 
As I said earlier in the video, I will at some point do a video ranking the entire catalog from, from Pretty For You to, God, what's the new one? Not Detroit Stories. He came out with another one just recently. I don't remember the name of it. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not up to date with the last couple of albums, but I do go in pretty late with him. I have some later, later albums by him, but I really love. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, anyway, thank you guys for watching, and thank you everybody who uh, has subscribed. And But if you haven't, you might want to consider subscribing. And uh, you know, if you do, click the little bell, because you're going to want notifications, otherwise you won't know when videos come out, or maybe you will, maybe you won't. Hmm. Um, but come back on Thursday, because Crystal Durant and Tommy Von Voigt are going to be here, and we are going to be doing our second half of our Q&A video. Yeah, we... we we did a Q&A video recently. I put up a video where I asked the viewers to send in questions. They sent in the questions. We did our Q&A taping and uh, taping. <laughs> and it went really long. So we have a two-parter. And uh, this Thursday is the second part of that. And then the following week, we'll resume our Albums of the Year series with 1988. But yeah, so this Thursday, Q&A part two. I will see you guys then. I'm gonna have some water. I'm gonna have some water. I put New York tap in this, so it's not, it's a little less tasty than it would have been, but you gotta do what you gotta do.